immunoprecipitation, running a titer test. For the titer test, you will need the antigen for which you are looking for antibodies against. You will also need a set of patient samples in a series of dilutions. A titer plate is a small petri plate with agar inside of it. There are no nutrients or supplements in the agar. There should be seven wells in the plate. The center well will house the antigen. The other wells will be used for the patient sample. The patient sample has been divided into a series of dilutions. One well will be used for the inoculation of each dilution. You will be using the 2 to 20 microliter micropipette for this exercise. Using a clean tip for the antigen and for each of the patient samples, you should load the antigen first. Again, the antigen should be loaded in the center well of the titer plate. Be careful when loading the wells with the antigen or patient sample not to puncture through the bottom of the well. Here, the micropipette is being used to load one of the patient samples. Once the antigen and patient samples have been loaded, radial diffusion will begin. Once you have completed loading the plates, you should wrap the titer plate in a moist paper towel. This will help ensure that the titer and the agar stays moist during storage. Do not flip the titer plate upside down. Always keep the plate lid side up. This will prevent the spilling of any of your samples into the lid of the plate. You should also have a plastic bag of some sort that you can label with your group name. Your titer should be stored in a refrigerator inside the plastic bag. If a refrigerator is not available for storage, room temperature is fine. Reading the results of your titer. Immunoprecipitation reactions occur between soluble antigens and soluble antibodies. Here is a labeled titer plate. Antigen was loaded in the center well and will diffuse through the media in a radial manner. Each of the patient samples and their dilutions were loaded into the remaining six wells in numerical order, undiluted, 1 to 2, 1 to 4, 1 to 8, 1 to 16, and 1 to 32. Each of these are dilutions of the original undiluted patient sample. As the patient samples and the antigen diffuse through the media, they will meet and precipitation reactions will occur. For precipitation reactions to occur between an antigen and an antibody, there must be a specific concentration of antibody and antigen present. Since antigen was only loaded once in the well, the concentration of antigen is constant. The only variance is the concentration of the patient antibody. Patients that have a titer of 1 to 8 or less are considered non-immune. Patients with a titer higher than 1 to 8 are considered. The small white marks seen here in the plate are precipitation reactions between antigen and antibody in the different dilutions of patient serum. The titer test is used extensively in diagnostic laboratories and even in just doctor's offices to determine existing immunity to diseases. Titers are often used to determine if vaccinations or booster shots are needed against disease.